Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, this is Tony Dang. Today I'm going to be showing you how to quickly correct and grade some S-Log2 footage. We're going to do this uh, rather quickly. This is using DaVinci Resolve 17 and we're going to be working with S-Log2 footage that is uh, shot in S-Gamut 3 dot cine. Uh, so that is what we're going to be doing. If you like this video or any of the other content on my channel, please do not hesitate to help support this channel by going to patreon.com slash Tony Day. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. These are the different shots here. Uh, some outdoor stuff with uh, some color in it and we have me for uh, skin tone. Please excuse my hair. This is a shot in the middle of COVID. We are going to open up our project settings. We're gonna go into color management here and your default is gonna probably look something like this. We are gonna change the color science to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. And we are not going to use one of the presets here. Uh, we're gonna be picking custom, and uh, I'll show you the reason why. If we pick DaVinci Wide Gamut, let's just say we pick that one, and the output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2, and I hit save, it's not going to transform properly. The reason for this is that the input color space is not going to uh, be correct. If I right click here and I go to input color space and I scroll down to S log 2, you're going to notice that it's only S gamut. It is not S gamut 3 cine. So this is not going to work. We need to have the uh, gamma and the gamut isolated or it won't actually be uh, transforming properly. So. When we go into uh, color science, we're gonna keep that YRGB color managed and we're gonna go to custom. When we go to custom here, we're gonna click on use separate color space and gamma. The input color space, we're going to choose S gamut 3 cine and we're gonna go over here to the gamma and we're gonna pick S log 2. For the timeline color space, we're gonna stay in DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate. For the output color space, we're gonna go Rec. 709 and gamma 2.2. In the timeline color space, this is basically your working color space. If you want to work in something else, you can do that, but I'm finding that if I'm gonna use the regular YRGB color managed, that this DaVinci wide gamut and intermediate are really, really nice to work in. It keeps your footage basically being worked the same way, regardless of what you feed into it. So I like this, we'll hit save. When you do that, you're gonna see that uh, everything will now be transformed, okay? and you are going to have to do your corrections, but this will basically be a mathematical transform into uh, whatever you picked for your output. So uh, we'll go ahead and start with this shot, turn those clips off, and the first thing that I'm going to do, uh, we're just going to adjust our exposure with offset a bit, kind of like that, and for the most part, um, you know, if we were just doing a quick transform and this looked good to us, uh, I'd say most of this is already pretty fine as it is. Um, this is a really quick correction. The white balance was done uh, pretty correctly. Uh, if we go over here, hit the, uh, even the sampler here, we're gonna see it's 128 across the board. I mean, we're, we're already pretty accurate in our uh, white balance. We'll call this exposure. We'll call this one a white balance. Uh, actually, you know what, we don't need this one. So we'll just go ahead and what we'll do, we'll use a 2x zoom here. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of get some of these other colors where I like it. So this will be the grading portion. I'm gonna go into the color warper here and we're gonna go to log and we'll take red, push that. It's kind of weird with this. If you try to go to the left, if you try to pull this way with red, which I tend to do um, with redder kind of skin sometimes, um, if you try to do that and just pull left on the hue, it won't go. You have to go all the way around and then pull back. So we'll just move it back slightly like this, and then we'll pull yellow toward orange like this, and then we'll pull back on the saturation a bit just like that. And green, I kind of like the greens on the warmer side uh, anyway, so we're just gonna leave that. Blue, I'm going to pull towards cyan. That's before and after, okay? So yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it on the hue. And then if we want to do a quick uh, grade uh, to add some teal and orange, even though this isn't really made for, this shot is not really shot for that, we'll, we'll do it anyway. 
uh, just to have a little color contrast. We'll just pull the shadows down like this a bit. And then we'll take the mid-tones, push them a little bit toward orange. And we will then push our highlights warmer. Just like that, just add this. So this is shadow, mid, and highlights. And what I'll do here is just uh, adjust the range a bit to grab more of the shadow and less of the mid-tone with the teal. Like that. Mid-tones, we'll leave it. Highlights, we'll leave that where it is. Yep, so there's that. And we'll just take all this, create a compound look, okay? This is um, after the correction, going straight into Rec. 709, Gamma 2.2. This is with the exposure adjustment, and then this is with the look. Okay, we'll just go on and off with the look. So let's look at the other ones. Uh, honestly, on these, all I'm gonna do, because it's nat nature, it's, it's not something that I'm gonna make a, a bunch of changes with, but I just wanted to pull down the exposure so you can kind of see even with 8-bit um, S-Log2, the colors can look pretty good without you really doing anything um, other than just getting it into the uh, uh, proper color space. Um, and again, this is 8-bit. If you're shooting 10-bit, it's not as big of an issue. But if you're doing a lot of contrast like this, you might start to see separation in colors or, you know, things like that. I wouldn't do too much of that, uh, honestly, in 8-bit uh, S-Log2. Um, but if you want to try to get away with it, um, you can try. I've just found that adjusting the exposure gets me about where I need to go. And um, for you know, saturation and colors. I haven't found the need to really overly saturate anything. I, I usually don't have to add. I, I often just pull back a little bit of the saturation. So that's it for that shot. This one, let's look at the waveform. Uh, again, pull it down a bit. And I usually overexpose, by the way. Um, like I've said previously, if it's S-Log2, even if it's 10-bit, doesn't matter. I'll overexpose, about one stop is enough and the results are pretty nice looking. I, I just don't usually see much of a reason to do a whole lot of fixing with uh, S-Gamut 3, um, S-Gamut, or, or, or any of those uh, from Sony. And then this last one, uh, this is actually my favorite one of this sequence because this flower, I mean, this looks pretty much exactly like what I saw when I shot this. This color is exactly like what this looks like in real life. So I was pretty surprised at how accurate that S Gamut 3 Cine to Rec. 709 conversion was. So um, essentially, as long as you get your white balance right, overexpose slightly, you're fine. So that's really it. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you'd like to say, please uh, leave me a note in the comments section. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, if you like this video and you want to see more uh, like it, please uh, go to patreon.com slash Tony Day. Uh, and join up. Uh, would love to see you. Uh, Till next time.